Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Press Play Lifestyle Inspired Podcast, where we do interviews with inspiring and interesting people like our friend Ashley today on topics to help you find the resources, tools, and support to be your best inspired self. So how are you doing today, Ashley? Hi. <laughs> well, I'm doing great this morning. How are you today? I'm good. I, was, I think I was telling you before we got on camera that um, I haven't had my coffee yet because my husband decided we were cleaning out the refrigerator. So um, hopefully I'm still chipper. <laughs> <laughs> um, so would you mind just telling the audience like who you are and what you do? Um, just a little bit about you, please. Absolutely. So um, again, my name is Ashley Puckett. I'm a country music artist out based out of um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I had recently just put out my first debut album on Valentine's Day. So I'm still really excited about that. Um, it was, uh, it's called Never Say Never. And uh, we've had a lot of success so far with everything. Um, the debut single um, was out. It's called Medicine. And that one started um, back in August of 19. And then Bulletproof, we released on my birthday. So that one is the current single out now. Um, so a lot of people listening might be hearing that one on the radio, um, streaming. That one's getting a lot of attention, um, both um, on internet radios, even AM and FM. So I'm really excited about that. Um, a lot of positive feedback on that one. But that was uh, back on January 9th. So um, since then, you know, I've had... Um, I was in an issue for Women of Music and Billboard Magazine. Um, I've had a lot of really cool interviews, talking to a lot of cool people. And, um, you know, I'm delighted to be on this show, too, just to share some stuff with some new fans. And um, it's just, I, I'm a day-by-day -day kind of girl, and I like to take it all in. So we've had a lot of success. So I'm excited to see where it's going to go. Wonderful. Wow. I love all the positive energy. So you said Bulletproof is doing really well right now and um, on even AM, FM, and that was real exciting. Why do you think it's doing so well? Was there just something special about it or you just market your face off or what, what are you thinking? <laughs> I think it's a little bit of all kinds of things, to be honest with you. Um, I think when Medicine came out, nobody really knew who I was, even though it's an absolutely beautiful song. And um, with everything going on right now in the world, I... I've been trying to reshare medicine just because it's one of those songs that you can kind of take a lot of different ways. Um, you can take it down a path as, you know, baby, I'm in love with you and you're my medicine to everything. Or, you know, some people are inspired by it because it's more of a, they think of it like a tribute to the Lord. Even if, you know, I, I love songs that you can, you know, kind of take your own, aspects and, and bring that into your personal life. So I have been resharing that one, but Bulletproof itself is more of a song that I think is more upbeat. It shows a lot of my personality and it's more of a, a hardcore country trick song. So I think a lot of people relate to it very well. And um, aside from that, I have been having a lot of help on the marketing side of it too. Uh, my manager, Mike Stover, he is fantastic. So I know we've had a lot of promotions on the radio too. So um, really me just going from everything back in August when this all kind of started till now, I've had a lot of people, good people helping out and, you know, with the combination, it's, it's working. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm actually a huge country music fan. Um, but I, it was because in, when I was a kid, we actually ended up moving to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, which literally no one knows about, um, unless you're either a country music singer or you live in Tennessee. And, um, what was really interesting there is everyone was somehow related to Dolly Parton, like, like everybody in the yeah. whole place. <laughs> it's really, really odd. So I'm like, Oh, she's famous. And awesome um how how is it being a country music singer not in like nashville like is it any more difficult like you said you're in pennsylvania right is like i don't know if there's an epic center of country music recording artists that are all kind of hanging out in pennsylvania so do you find it more difficult or you know what's your feeling on that um it's definitely more difficult um you're right there's there's not a congregation of us up here you know doing the same thing that we would in nashville um, so for me, that is something that I have to be mindful of, you know, I think now with everything kind of moving forward um, in a good way for me, you know, 
there might be some times when I have to split my time between here, make some more trips to Nashville. Um, a lot of people decide the right thing to do is move down there. Um, might not be the right thing for me at the time. Um, I don't know if that's something I'd consider, you know, down the road. Um, but as of right now, I, I like the idea of being here and then, you know, either making multiple trips down there per year, every couple months, whatever that might look like when the time comes. Um, but it's, it's unique because there's more resources down there. There's a lot more people down there um, that can help with this kind of thing. And um, my only thing is, you know, you have fans everywhere. So I don't think wherever I plant my seeds and, and call my home is really going to make a, dip, uh, a difference. So, you know, I've been chilling up here and I think, hey, if I need to be down there, it's, you know, a few hour drive and a plane yeah. ride. So I've been taking it day by day, but uh, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. So um, is your family where you are now? Like, do you have a big family or are you kind of like out on a farm in the middle of nowhere somewhere? Like kind of what's, <laughs> what's your home vibe kind of like? Sometimes I wish I'm out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> no, we're, uh, I'm actually um, in the North Huntington area. So it's uh, maybe 25, 30 minutes outside of Pittsburgh. Okay. So um, I guess I'm fortunate to have, um, you know, a little bit of the best of both worlds. I'm, you know, 20 minutes out of the city or, you know, I can take a walk outside and see some trees if I want to. <laughs> so um, I, I kind of, you know, like this area for a multitude of reasons. I do have all my, rest of my family in the area. Um, so it, yeah. it would be tough to leave. <laughs> yeah. So how long have you been, are you, were you like the person that came out of the womb singing or did it start, they come <laughs> up later? So, you know, what, when did you start out in music? So I started, I was uh, probably about five years old. Um, so you, might say I just came out of the womb singing. Yeah. <laughs> um, my mom jokes about it because she used to sing to me all the time. Um, so she thinks this is part her. <laughs> but um, <laughs> take credit where you want to take it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and started singing with the Dixie Chicks. That was my first ever song. Um, it was You Were Mine. I love um, the Dixie Chicks. From their Wide Open Spaces album. Yeah. Yeah, I'm super excited they're coming back. <laughs> yeah so um, yeah since then favorite. I've been I'm sorry go ahead no that, no god I was just saying I always liked them because they were they were one of like the first women country that were real sassy so I, I kind of like their sassy vibe yes yeah I think that's one thing too it was I think the all-female is what initially made me start participating in you know their music and what they were doing um but they're sass too like they weren't afraid to stand up for themselves they're not afraid to do anything and I love that about artists um that those are the ones that I look up to yeah so some that have like that independent spirit right right <laughs> so so right now in the music you know in the music scene do you have um some artists that you really like or that you're following real closely I do. Um, so, you know, growing up, inspirations that I have always looked up to, um, it started with people like Leanne Rimes, um, Leanne Womack, Patsy Cline, Carol King, um, those type of influences. Um, right now, too, I'd say Miranda Lambert is one of my favorites. Um, she just like the Dixie Chicks. She has that, not that she's like the Dixie Chicks, but she has that thing about her to where she just don't care what people think. She's going to live her life, have fun and make the most of it. And if you follow and like her, you're cool. And if you don't, then, you know, she has everyone else, you know, um, by her side. So I, I love that about her. Um, you know, Carrie Underwood too, she's done so much to be this successful. And some people laugh because Carrie Underwood in, in this generation is still newer compared to, you know, people that have, you know, grew up on Faith Hill and, and artists like that. But um, to me, you know, it's not just your voice. It's not just your success. It's how you got there. And I think she put a lot of work into getting where she is. So, you know, I try to look at a lot of different things for guidance and success, not just, you know, one thing or another. Yeah, I love that. So you kind of follow, I think she, her story kind of shows that the American dream of working really hard and doing what you love is still a path to success, right? Um, it does. That's exactly it. 
Yeah. I mean, she might have gotten lucky with, you know, everything she put in, you know, winning American Idol, but, you know, people don't see the backstory and they don't see what she had to do after that. They just see, oh, she's American Idol. She's famous, you know? <laughs> yeah, but they worked really hard on the show, too. I mean, because they think did. About how many of them didn't become successful, right? There are a lot of them that won and still didn't do much with it. They're right. I mean, even, um, you know, there's so many that I can't tell you the last one. I mean, I, I watch it here and there, but the last one that I remember before Carrie Underwood was Kelly Clarkson. So yeah. to be honest with you, you know, a lot of the in-betweens, if, if they don't continue that, they kind of fall off. Yeah. I haven't watched that in a really long time either. I think you're right. It was like, that was sort of <laughs> when it was bigger. And then it was like, all right, it's enough. Uh, <laughs> I've seen the voice once in a while though. I think um, like, cause I like Blake Shelton. I think he's, funny and he's more my age group so you know I'm like oh look at that guy's still kicking around um but even that's really casual really casual so how is music like when I was growing up like literally we went through mediums quick we had like eight track cassette tech you know there was LP was in there for a minute and then now like, and then CDs, and my kids don't even know what that is. Like, literally, we, we were trying to find a CD player the other day for some homework. We can't even find a, a computer doesn't even have a CD player anymore. And so now everything's on Spotify or iTunes. So um, how do you think that does it or doesn't it affect how people get music or how people listen to music? It absolutely affects it. It's, it's so different from, you know, when I was growing up, you know, my first couple songs that I was singing, I, you know, I mentioned the Dixie Chicks and that was on a CD, but there was a, um, a, a I think it was a two, two ladies in the band. Um, they called themselves M2M and nobody knows who they are anymore, <laughs> but um, they, I sang a few of their songs growing up and it was on a cassette tape. So, you know, I think the last time I bought a CD looking back was either Joe Nichols or it was a Josh Groban album. So this was probably 10 years ago, <laughs> you know, and, and now it is, you know, you don't have to, unfortunately, I hate to say this as an artist, but you don't have to go buy anything. If you want to hear a song, you have a song in your head, you're pulling up Spotify or you're pulling up Pandora or YouTube, you know, and and just listening to it because it's at your fingertips. That's just the convenience of everything. Um, but on the artist aspect, you know, the only way we're actually, you know, aside from building a fan base, having everything out there, it's really tough because our main source of income now is basically touring. <laughs> you yeah. know, when I did my digital release, um, we released everything on Valentine's Day, but I knew that the, the hard copy CDs weren't going to be such an essential product. So I still don't even have them, you know, they're on their way, but you know, it's, I didn't see a, a big important reason to have that rushed for the same day because it, it, you know, any more people just, it's on their phone, it's on their computer. They're mm -hmm. either streaming monthly through Apple. So, yeah. um, it's good and bad. <laughs> yeah. I think one thing I noticed was like when, um, I remember when I, when I was with the cassette tape, you would literally like listen to your favorite song like over and over by like backing it up and then play it again until you like literally like wore your tape out and then you're screwed. Um, and then we got CDs and what was cool then is like you listen to the whole CD, CD over and over, but, but you listen to it over and over. Like it was, you only had so much in your collection, right? So the good side of that was like, you have hyper fans. Like we know all the things about all the things. But the bad side of that was like some of the newer artists or indie artists or little, like the less known, like you said, the M to M, you know, they didn't get as much opportunity to be heard because people bought what they saw in the store and that, and that's what they could get. Um, but I got to imagine like it makes monetizing your music very difficult, like the business side of music, like clearly you love it, but you also have to eat, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, and again, I hate to put it that way, but, you know, the last thing I want to do is feel selfish when my entire, 
you know, life, I've basically worked towards sharing my music, but you're right. I mean, on the side of it, for me to keep doing what I love to do, there does have to be a return of some sort. And, you know, it's very difficult to do that unless you're right now selling, you know, selling hard copy CDs or merchandise, t-shirts, et cetera, or, um, you know, you're getting, you know, a ton of Spotify shares. So, you know, I do benefit if people are adding my songs to their playlists because they're just calculating. But again, you don't really see a return from that until you have hundreds of thousands of, of Spotify plays. And, you know, that takes time too. So, you know, the bigger picture, I don't think the general fans notice. Um, but again, that's where we as artists have to kind of keep level headed because, you know, we do have to make our music available for those and, and follow the time. Basically, if, if we're saying we don't want our music out there, then, you know, we're losing out on, you know, a ton of fans that might hear me on the radio for the first time and say, oh, I, I want to look her up, wonder what else she sings. Or, you know, I know when I hear songs for the first time, I'll use it on Shazam and I'll remember to go back to it. And I'll, I'll screenshot, as funny as that sounds, but I'll remember later to go play it. And, you know, that's kind of how I, I learned. So I have to keep that in mind, even though it's it's not a automatic return, I guess I should say. Yeah, it sounds like um, a musician has to now be both a musician and a, an excellent marketer. To yes. Be able to, <laughs> yeah, so long gone are the times where you can just be a, an amazing singer and someone will find you and now you're rich, right? <laughs> it's a little bit different. It was probably yeah. never like that, right? We just think that because we're we're out here in like non -t not TV land, right? We don't know. So, it's interesting. <laughs> so one of the I don't know. Go ahead. I was just gonna say I think the music industry was always like that. And I, to be honest with you, still think it is. Yeah. Um, just yeah. with a lot that I've seen, it, you know, it's either you have to have a lot of money or know the right people. And, you know, so it's very tough because there's so many of us out there and, you know, there's a lot of artists that sound amazing, but they don't get heard the right way or they don't get seen by the right eyes. Yeah. So, you know, they, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So um, one of the things I thought, I, I was just so naive, I guess, like two artists that I recently interviewed, they're some of Michael's people um, through Michael Stover. Um, the first one, his main source of, he teaches guitar right that like that that's what he does most of the time when he's not out touring and that's a big source of income for him and the other yeah. one works as like a big like a technology company and i doubt people that he works with even realize that he's like out there in that <laughs> that big of art i thought it was really interesting um especially since they're both kind of in the country-esque and um I'm in the Midwest, so we don't tend to have a ton of country. It's a little more, it's mixed, right? People do a lot of things, but I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's enlightening that everyone's having to do other things as well. You know, even though they're big enough to be interviewed by a bunch of people and you see him getting all these awards and then he's like, yeah, I got to go. I got a guitar class I'm teaching. I was like, oh, what? that's so crazy. So do you do any other, do you do other things um, to earn a living in addition to singing right now? Yes, I do. Um, aside from sitting on my couch that I've been doing the last two weeks, <laughs> yeah, um, <I'm> <laughs> I typically do. Um, I have, uh, you know, DJ, um, karaoke, uh, couple times a week. Um, on top of that, I also work at a car dealership. So some little hidden secrets about Ashley. Oh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it is something that we kind of keep separate, I, I think, because you don't want one side or the other really trying to think there's, you know, the two careers are clashing. So it is something that for a long time, I kept very, very separate. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a yeah. high energy kind of person, if you couldn't tell. So I, I like to keep busy. I hate sitting around, staying in one spot. So I like having a lot of different things to dabble in and, and money is something that you can never have enough of for music, yeah. <laughs> you know, whether yeah, it's if you get fly to Nashville, you're going to need to sell a couple cars or something, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, instrument, flying, traveling, um, you know, marketing, even, you know, it's all that kind of thing. Um, people don't realize what you're trying to build. So, you know, anyone who does keep a, a full-time or part-time job while they're doing this is, is smart. 
Yeah, very smart. It sounds like it. And I can see like DJ karaoke, that sort of fits into the vibe though. So it's you're you're able to stay in a realm where you're loved and that make that makes sense. Um, but I could see the other is like, yep, this is how I earn money and this is what I do that I love that I want to earn money at. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's yeah, you have to keep the, the money flow and that's kind of at least I enjoy my, my day job. And then, you know, the karaoke kind of keeps my vocals going when I'm not doing a show. So, you know, there's, there's still benefit with a lot of it. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of artists that, that I've heard of, and, and I think smartly keep their private life, like their family, their significant others, their kids, their jobs, like not like secret, but they just aren't, they're not out there putting it on a bulletin board because they want some some separation between fanboying and like their real life. Is that something that um, you've thought much about now that you're, you know, really starting to blow up since like August, you said. So what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough, um, you know, trying to do that. Like I said, even with, you know, in the aspect of talking about where I work, um, that is something that I knew I wasn't going to shield off forever. It, it, was something that I could comfortably shield off for a little while. Um, it's funny though, because I, I still have, um, you know, other uh, employees that I work with once in a while coming up, hey, I didn't know you sang. And hey, my girlfriend just told me she heard you here or she just heard your song on Spotify and it came in in a playlist. So it's kind of cool seeing that. Uh, but at the same time, there's going to be a time where everyone knows. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I guess I didn't really think about, you know, I knew in the end, you know, if I, if I become this artist to where I'm played across all 50 states, then yeah, everyone's going to notice my name. Everyone's going to know who I am, which I, I knew going into this, I'd be cool with. Um, it would be an adjustment. Um, but for the time being, I do kind of take it slow. I don't always share everything um, if it's not asked. And um, I guess that's kind of cool too in, a, in the aspect of, you know, my fans getting to know me. Uh, maybe, you know, they pick up something new and learn something new every time they, they see me or talk to me or, you know, hear an interview like this. So um, mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of cool just going one day at a time. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how it's going to affect me six months from now, one year from now, um, mm -hmm. but it's we'll where see. I am. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned a lot of um, female artists or female artists, I guess can't talk today. Great for podcasting. Um, <laughs> are there any male country singers that you really look up to or really enjoy listening to? Yes. Um, as far as listening, um, I have a very large um, array of who I like to listen to. Um, right now, I like a lot of the artists that have a sound that's so unique that, you know, even when they put out a new song, you know, oh, hey, that's like Chris Stapleton, or hey, that's Mitchell Tenpenny, or I know that's Tracy Lawrence, because they have that, that voice. It's that's just so like, unique. Yeah. Um, like the the old days, like Garth Brooks, right? Everybody knew it was Garth Brooks, or Randy Travis right. with the super low. Yeah, Randy Travis, too. Um, yeah, so many of them, uh, even like right now, the newer up-and-comings, um, very, very big Cole Swindell fan. Um, Everyone loves Luke Bryan. I liked I liked some of his first couple songs, um, so I, I kind of moved away from that. But that um, that play it again. I, I love hearing that song every time it comes on. Um, but yeah, a lot of those ones that it, if they have a unique sound. I mean, I, I listen to Chris Stapleton a lot um, right now. Um, there's just so many of them. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So um, is there a so if everyone is loving you and they want to find out more about your music or where they can eventually get the CDs that you're going to get in after shipments actually come in, um, where would they go to find out more about you, Ashley? Yeah, great. So um, you can catch me anywhere online. Um, I will tell you I'm very addicted to Facebook. Um, so if you want to hear anything first, um, you'll want to friend me there. Um, and, uh, more importantly, um, go on and like my artist page. Um, so it's just Ashley Puckett music. Um, my website though, I do keep up to date. Um, it's just ashleypuckett.com. Um, the CDs will be available there too. Um, any of my 
tour dates I post up there, um, you should be able to get tickets or there's at least um, links to find tickets um, when, you know, the world gets up and running again. Mm -hmm. And then um, as far as music, if you want to hop over to anywhere, any of the platforms that you listen, Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, Amazon Music, iTunes, um, I'm anywhere. When we can anywhere all have play me on the uh, jukebox. <laughs> <laughs> And I would say it, it sounds like you did recommend, though, for those that are even coming into your music newer, that while your Bulletproof is super um, popular right now, you did say medicine was one that you think that would be good for this time. So if people want to go back and try to find that one, too, that it, that was a recommendation I believe you made earlier on, right? Yes, um, there's a personal attachment to all 13 of the songs on the album, so I hope you get um, some time to listen to all of them. But uh, Medicine, with everything going on, just having a rock when you're in those hard times, um, Bulletproof being the new um, new single. Um, there's a couple other ones, even Never Say Never, which is the title track. Um, and then, uh, you know, you learn a little bit about me later. Weightless is our last song on the album, number 13. Um, that was kind of a late added song, so it's really pretty. So um, depending on what you're looking for, um, I think there's something for everyone on the album. So I hope everyone enjoys it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ashley, for taking the time. I appreciate it. And I look forward to all of your music that's coming up. Great. Well, thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.